Thanks for staying with us. Time now for African News with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, South Africa's main opposition party fields a top anti apartheid activist as its presidential candidate to go up against the ANC. The move sees some, though, accuse the Democratic Alliance of cynically chasing the black vote. Also, conflict and humanitarian crises, rather than growing economies and development, top the agenda for African leaders this week as they meet in Addis Ababa for a summit of the African Union. And after winning a high-stakes competition, a South African DJ sees that the sky is really no longer the limit. He'll be the first black African to be blasted into space. First up, South Africa's main Democratic, main uh, opposition party, the Democratic Alliance, today announced that it will be fielding a prominent black anti-apartheid activist as a presidential candidate in this year's election. Mampila Rampile was the partner of black consciousness leader Steve Biko, who was beaten to death in police custody in 1977. Well, her challenge to the ruling ANC has been slammed by some as a cynical attempt by the DA to win black support. On Nicolas Schumann has more in this story. Mampila Rampili knows the leader of the opposition, Helen Zillow, well. The head of the Democratic Alliance used to be a journalist. She was the one who uncovered how Rampili's partner, black consciousness activist Steve Biko, was tortured and died in police custody in 1977. This Tuesday, Rampili said her small party was joining Zillow's opposition movement. The former World Bank director will now be their candidate in this year's presidential election and will face the favourite, the incumbent Jacob Zuma of the ANC. This is not the time to talk about the ANC. You know it all. The stolen money, the broken promises, the lost jobs. We want rather to talk about tomorrow. The ANC, which has run Africa's biggest economy since the end of white minority rule in 1994, responded swiftly and directly to this new alliance. That is not a measure. It is a, 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 what we call a render black and render leader. Political analysts say this new alliance will not prevent another ANC win, but that the ruling party might get a smaller majority this time. The ANC has unparalleled grassroots and donor support. In 2009, it got 65 percent of the ballots. The Democratic Alliance came second with 16 percent. Top African ministers have started holding meetings in Addis Ababa ahead of an African Union summit in the Ethiopian capital this week. Heads of state will be joining them on Thursday and top of the agenda are the conflicts and crises are folding across the continent. And the bloc's peace and security councils met tonight and the wars in Central African Republic and South Sudan are key priorities. Another top issue is the regional and international response to the threat posed by extremist elements operating around the Sahel. Well, Duncan Woodside's in Addis for us. Counteracting the influence of al-Qaeda is high on the agenda of the African Union summit here in Addis Ababa. We've spoken today to the head of the African Union mission in Somalia, and he's urged the international community to do more to help ahead of an offensive against al-Shabaab in that country. We've also spoken to Libya's foreign minister, and he's acknowledged the presence of al-Qaeda-linked cells in his own country. He attributes that, at least partly, to spillover from Mali. I'm not surprised if there are some indications that some of the elements of Al-Qaeda is present in, in south of Libya or represented in eastern of Libya. I think what is really important is not only to recognize the presence of those elements, it's more than that, is what kind of support and assistance and actions nationally and regionally and globally to deal with this particular problem. Also on the agenda are the situations in the Central African Republic and South Sudan, both of which remain mired in conflict. Now, with regard to the Central African Republic, the newly selected president, Catherine Samba Panza, has not been invited to partake in the summit here in Addis Ababa. That's due to her country's membership of the AU remaining suspended. Now, with regard to South Sudan, the AU this week lauded a ceasefire which was signed a few days ago here in Addis Ababa. But uh, both sides uh, in that conflict have since then accused one another of violating the truce.
Duncan Woodside there for us in Addis Ababa. Now, the UN's also addressed violence in Central African Republic today. Amidst fears that inter-religious violence could degenerate into full-blown genocide between Christians and Muslims, the Security Council's unanimously authorised up to 600 EU troops to back up French and African peacekeeping troops already in place. Now, there will also be financial sanctions against anyone found guilty of human rights abuses, threatening peace or political transition, or violating an arms embargo. Well, thousands have been killed since a takeover by Seleka rebels last year. And militia on all sides have been accused of atrocities. Earlier, François Vincat spoke to France's ambassador to the UN, Gérard Arrault. When we arrived in the beginning of December, you know, it was just after two days or two nights uh, when uh, the Seleka had indulged into an orgy of killings, you know, really nearly 1,000 people of, of killed, most of them being Christians. So now we have, you know, the, the cycle of, of revenge, retaliation, of course, not against the murderers, but against all the, the Muslims. Uh, so, as I've said, there is an incredible amount of, of hatred and resentment. The, the religious leaders are doing their best. They are, they are really uh, going throughout the country and calling for reconciliation. But it will, it will take time uh, to reach this point. So, for the moment, we need law and order. Uh, we need also a political process so that the, the Central African people understand that they have to shift to a, a normal uh, a political life. But uh, it's true, we are in a very dire situation in Central African Republic. Despite last Friday's ceasefire agreement, UN forces say that the number of refugees seeking shelter at its compounds across South Sudan continues to rise. The UN missions reporting ongoing fighting between government forces and opposition rebels in Unity State. Peace talks between the two sides continue in Addis Ababa. The South Sudanese government blames insurgents backing former Vice President Rik Machar for violations of the truce, saying that the deal's failing because Machar's envoys can't keep their fighters in line. Thousands have been killed in violence that broke out in mid-December. At least two people have been critically injured in a grenade attack in a northern Rwandan town. Several others were wounded after two men on motorcycles hurled the explosive at a bus stop in Musanze. Authorities have blamed rebel FDLR forces. They say are based in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. The attack comes at the start of the trial of 16 people, including President Paul Kagame's former bodyguard, Joel Mutabazi. Now, they're all charged with trying to overthrow the state, allegedly, whilst working with distant groups like the FDLR. Mutabazi was extradited by Uganda last year. Authorities there say they sent him home by mistake. While well, born and raised in a township just outside of Pretoria, Mandla Maseko is poised to become the first black African to go into space. The 25-year-old won a competition to be blasted up to 100 kilometers above the Earth when commercial space flights start next year. When they said, you guys in front are, go are going, and I was like, wow. That I, I, knew, I knew that my life has taken a turn from that moment. So I was... I was excited. The part-time DJ, who lives with his parents and younger siblings, is among 23 young people to win a global competition to be blasted into space. Dreams do come true. I'm a believer of that. I dreamt, uh, I lived, I kept acted, and now it has came true. Manla beat off around one million other entrants to win a one-hour flight on this space plane, the Lynx Mark II. It's being paid for by Unilever and the Space Expedition Corporation to promote the first tourist flights into space. The craft will use a rocket engine to propel itself to an altitude of over 100 kilometers where Mandla will experience weightlessness, something his sisters can hardly believe. No one in this family has ever left South Africa. He started going to Tanzania, and then before you know it, he is going to Florida. Now he is going to space. I don't know what comes after space. I'm sure if there was something, he will go back. It wasn't easy getting picked. Manla was sent to a space camp in Florida, where the challenges included skydiving, air combat, and G-force training. Now the vomit comment, it's a room that spills around. You stand up against the wall. And while it's spinning, at some point the floor disappears. Now the challenge there was for you to pick up five flags beneath your feet and then put them above your head. 
one by one. Manla's enthusiasm and determination impressed the judges, securing his seat in the space plane. But his journey won't just end there. The township DJ wants to study aeronautical engineering and qualify as a mission specialist, with the aim of planting the South African flag on the moon. Uh, this is me. Oh, good luck. Well, that wraps up African news from me for now, but I will be back with more news from across the continent in about an hour. Short break now, though, and I'll hand you back to our colleagues who'll bring you more news and headlines from across the world. Take care. Thank you.